So do Cam Montague. We're here to discuss your book, Love on the Isle of Dogs. It's a graphic novel, is that correct? That's right. It came from a series of drawings that I did from memory, thinking about my life. And there was a particular time of my life that was very difficult. It was my marriage. It's a long time ago now, about 25 years, gosh. And it was, it was in the 1990s on the Isle of Dogs in East London and my husband had really serious mental health issues. I didn't know what was wrong with him. Um, I had a hard time struggling with all that. And so remembering that time, it, it was good to do it in pictures actually. It really helped me think about things and reflect on things and remember that time without feeling, getting sort of caught up in, in the difficulties of it. it, it it was a really interesting experience. So when you say it was an interesting experience, it's because your husband was becoming um, slightly ill. Yeah, he was very ill actually really. He um, was paranoid schizophrenic, diagnosed in the end, and he had to go into London Hospital. He, um, he sectioned himself in the end, and uh, that happened while uh, we had a small baby and I mean, it was so bad, really. I mean, it was a very, very traumatic. But um, there were also good times because it was very exciting. I was a young bride. I was a young wife. I had a lovely baby. Um, so that, in my own self, that there were also very f funny, sunny moments as well over this time. And I've tried to bring some of those in as well as the difficult moments. So this is uh, recounting your times as really he was a single mother because he wasn't around because of his problems. Yeah, I guess I wasn't a single mother at this time, but I was on my way to becoming a single mother and many things felt like I was a single mama. I've, because I've, you feel very alone anyway, I think, with pregnancy and giving birth for the first time, you, you kind of realise it's just about you. The, you know, in a way, every mother's a sort of a single mother in that way. You're kind of... It's you and your body and the baby. It's so intense. and But yes, it was on the way to becoming a real single mother because not soon after that I realised through this difficult period that it was going to be impossible to stay with him and to be a, a, a traditional family in the sense of man, woman and baby. I was going to have to look after the baby on my own. So this book covers the period at the Isle of... You was living at the Isle of Dogs. So your yeah. artworks depicting scenes from there that you was going through. Yeah, um, it was. It's such an interesting area. I, I found, and, and looking back, it's quite symbolic. Like this picture is of the Blackwall Tunnel, which uh, we often had to drive down, go between his family and the Isle of Dogs, and it's a very scary place in in the car. And some things, a few things happen in the Blackwall Tunnel, um, and. There you are, where are we going? It, it was very symbolic, some of these drives that we took in the car. He had an old Saab and, and yeah, it, it, it became sort of symbolic of the very difficult journeys that we were on in our lives as well. Uh, and as well as the roads, the, all the buildings going up, the huge sound of construction. And the 1990s in Docklands, there was a lot of people trying to make new lives there. There were young people coming to the area. It was East London was, was very much on the up, but it, it was also a very difficult place in some ways because there was so much construction happening and it was changing. So there's a lot of uh, change going on in the uh, area, but also in your own life, mentally and obviously with what was going on with your husband, yourself and your little baby. Exactly. So it, that felt like it was being mirrored really by the um, intense changes in the city all around me. And uh, that made great subjects for drawing, I think. And it, it was very interesting, the, my particular situation, because my husband was really talented, really talented person, and he built his own house. He was one of those uh, self-builder so he designed and built his own house and it was absolutely amazing and I was quite in awe of his skills and still am really when I reflect back and I look back and I think wow you're so amazing in your art and in your uh, abilities so you was telling us about how the 
book set in um, the Isle of Dogs. Mm. And so what's this piece here? Yeah, so I've picked out a piece which shows uh, an incident actually I heard as a story rather than saw in real life. So this is a drawing of a story that my husband told me the first time we met. And I think it's one of these examples of how things cover up mental illness. For example, in this he's cycling along at night and he, he got into a car accident and he lost his memory and he had to put his memory back. So often one then thought that things that were slightly odd about him were probably to do with th this accident and him losing his memory. Now this happened a little bit back before we got married and, and his language did come back. But it was, um, yeah, I guess it probably meant that it sort of covered up and one attributed any sort of oddities to to this accident rather than to other things because everybody seemed to accept that 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 was why he might perhaps get a little bit let's say confused about a few things because he couldn't remember the words for stuff and they, they came back gradually like um he uh, he was a great carpenter for instance and he had a um i suppose that looks like a screwdriver i think i meant to draw a chisel um and um he uh, that could be a chisel, I think. But, yeah, he couldn't remember the word for, for it. And then he'd hold it in his hand and the word would come back. And it was very endearing because he was obviously a very intelligent person. I guess I had some maternal instincts that I didn't know about, you know. Oh, I thought, you know. Which then, yeah. of course, you had to... Um, your maternal instincts properly came into effect because you, you got pregnant and had your little baby. Yeah, my little baby who is so super. Um, she's wonderful. And she was a great baby. I think I was so lucky because because my baby just did everything right. She was such a well-behaved baby, and she um, she used to not really cry so much as, as laugh. She always laughed rather than crying. She was just like the sweetest little baby. And, um, yeah, I felt very close to her always, so that was, um, you know, so as I say, there's moments of delight in the book as well as um, all the difficulties. You know, I remember the positive things about him too, you know. There was a, was it just, it's not just all doom and gloom but it's about how you you kind of even though you're in love it doesn't save things some things are beyond saving and this book will be available soon yes I've been very lucky in that people have supported a really successful Kickstarter I'm going to do a picture book but I also have been asked to do a second stage by a friend of mine who thought it would be a good idea for um, other publishers and I didn't want to do it at first but and then I have started and and it's going okay now and I'm like hmm this is interesting too uh, because she asked me to try and have a go at a text version of the book and at first I thought I don't want to do that because drawing is one thing I thought I don't know how to do this in text because isn't it going to sort of sink into some sort of mental <gasps> mud and feel really bad and go into bad places once I started to do it I thought oh I, I can see how I can sort of slightly duck this and weave it and and sort of go into my imagination a little bit as well as write what was in front of me and and I feel like I'm doing something original and and good now and I think one of the books that I looked at when I was thinking about it was um Plath the Bell Jar and I know that is about depression and suicide, her suicide and her uh, electroshock treatments that Sylvia Plath had when she was a young woman. But it doesn't feel like a depressing book to read. In, in a way, it's, it's a very strong book. There's such a strong sense of Sylvia Plath's personality through it. And, and also it feels like it's written quite quickly. And I th that was a great model for me. I'm still holding on to that to finish this book. Oh, well, we look forward to seeing the textbook and definitely the graphic novel will do wonders. Thank you very much, Jude. Thank you, Debbie.